Hey everybody, I'm live. I hope you can hear me. We've got some crazy Thunderdome news and TD with the Texas boys is going to join me as soon as he gets audio. He's working on it right now. Can I get a thumbs up if you can hear me? Let me know. I see nothing. And I'm not sure why. Can you hear me now? It says I'm live. Yes. Okay. Good deal. All right, guys. I got something that I want to show you. I want to check on my guest. He's having some speaker problems. TD is here, but we have no audio. All right. So I'm going to put you away for now. We'll go ahead and get into this. All right, guys. The end of the petrodollar. This is this is the biggest news since I've been paying attention. I want to show it to you. All right. All right. The, <clears throat> the end of the petrodollar. Another oil deal has been initiated with without the use of the dollar. The Indian Ministry of Extensional Affairs announced that their latest trade deal with Malaysia would be settled in Indian rupees. This is nutso. This initiative by the Reserve Bank of India is aimed at facilitating the growth of global trade and to support the interest of the global trading community in Indian rupees. Okay, so this is just part of the, the downward slide, the start of the Thunderdome. This is when other current countries start using currencies in place of the dollar. India has benefited from the West distraction from the Ukraine war, the, the RBI is allowing 18 countries to open Vo Vostro accounts. I don't even know what that is. And has been attracting new deals in trade and manufacturing. New Delhi and Moscow have strengthened their relationship as India is not imposing sanctions. The Indian Commerce Ministry said its five-year plan is to encourage the use of the rupee on an international scale while also planning to expand exports 2 trillion by 2030 remember they're always talking about 2030 trading in rupees will also allow india to save on conversion spreads and limit the country's dependence on the volatile dollar the brics treaty brazil russia india and china remain strong and the Oil giant Saudi Arabia and Iran would like to join the partnership. The Saudis stated at the beginning of the year they were open to settling trade in currencies other than the USD. There are no issues with discussing how we settle our trade arrangements, whether it is in US dollar, whether it is in euro, whether it's in Saudi Arabia. Real. Uh, so, look, let me change this real quick. So this is really interesting. I've got some more about the petrodollar um, and how it's going out of style and what is exactly uh, OPEC plus. We'll talk a little bit about that too, but let me check on my guest here. All right, TD, are you in? Are you ready? Hey, you got me? And nothing. <laughs> okay. All right, bud, I can't hear you. No, I don't think they can, too. Can the audience hear him? Can you hear TD? All right, buddy. I'm going to have to go it alone. We'll try it again. Third time's a charm. Later, dude. All right. He's out. 
Okay. So <clears throat> we were talking about OPEC plus. Uh, <clears throat> so you couldn't hear him. That's all right. That's all right. We'll get him next time. Uh, White House has responded to OPEC plus decision to cut crude production by 1 million barrels a day and saying that output cuts aren't advisable right now, given market uncertainty. Adding that the White House will continue to work with all producers and consumers to ensure energy markets support economic growth and lower prices for American consumers. Okay, OPEC plus does involve way more than just the half a million barrels that Saudi Arabia it has has done away with to push the price of oil up. All right. Listen to what who, who's involved. Saudi Arabia, Kuwait to voluntarily cut oil production by 128,000 barrels. UAE to reduce oil production by 144,000 barrels. Kazakhstan, 78,000 barrels. Iraq, 211,000 barrels. Algeria, 48,000 barrels. OMAN, 40,000 barrels. OPEC Plus is a group of 23 oil exporting countries which meets regularly to decide how much crude oil to sell on the world market. There's a lot more going on besides Saudi Arabia. Supply and demand is a big deal. When they cut supply, demand goes up. The price goes up. Now, I talked about this in an interview with Mario today. So you'll get to hear a little of this in uh, Tuesday's video. It was really good. You should check it out. But the story oh, was when my dirt guy called. And we were talking about, we're in natural gas, right? Uh, I've been working in natural gas for a long time. And we keep an eye on the oil rigs, the the, uh, the drilling rigs that actually drill the hole in the ground. And, you know, hey, such and such gas company's got five rigs drilling, such and such got 10. Well, uh, they're starting to stack rigs. Now, this is oil field, uh, you know, hearsay. Uh, but that's the way it always is. And when you start hearing this kind of stuff, uh, it doesn't happen immediately, but usually later on. So that's like the word on the streets is they're cutting these rigs and stacking them. Uh, and that's the, the bellwether. Uh, they're, they're fighting inflation. You know, the rock that my dirt guy sells uh, he sells it for $40 a ton. The reason it's so high is because Louisiana doesn't have any natural rock. That's really expensive here. So uh, a 13 yard dump truck, I'm just talking about a bobtail truck, uh, is almost $900 delivered. So these, uh, big, huge locations that these natural gas wells are on, Used to cost about three to four hundred thousand dollars. Now the dirt work costs four hundred thousand dollars. The price of rock, uh, on combined with that, puts it up around seven hundred to eight hundred thousand dollars to build a location. I, you know, there's soil cement. And cement goes down, and this is a big cost. I mean, the roads going into these locations aren't just piddly little oil field roads like I grew up on. These are like highways. 18-wheelers can, you know, go past one another carrying all their stuff. So it's it's a, the infrastructure uh, to build these wells is a big deal. And now we're starting to see, see this go away. All why? Uh, so this is complicated with inflation. They're stacking rigs because of the cost of everything, not to mention trying to find people to actually work. They're stacking rigs and we've got uh, Saudi Arabia 
and all those other countries cutting all at the same at the same time now this gets a little better because we're going to talk about food inflation in just a second but uh and then to make things worse biden cut uh got rid of our reserves he used our reserves he he used our savings and he wasn't he's not refilling it now they were waiting on they said the u.s would start refilling the spr if oil dropped below 72 dollars uh this won't be happening anytime soon energy secretary jennifer granholm statement uh, said it could take years to refill the reserve. So we're, we're, we're just not going to fill it up. If it doesn't go down to $72, we're just not going to do it. Now, how does that look going into a war? Or, you know, we're as close to war as we've ever been in my lifetime. All right, guys, let me take a break just for a second because I want to catch up on you guys' comments. Uh, Michael, Kurt, Jose, Callie, Jay White, the simple things in life overall, Bama Jay, all you guys are here. Thank you for being here. Hitting the like button. Don't forget. Um, all right. TD's back. I got I you. just had to log oh. out and log back in. It's working good. <laughs> He's back. The digital demons. Okay. I'm glad I'm not the only person that has. Oh boy, has technical difficulties. <laughs> okay, so let me catch you up, TD. We, I went over your story about the end of the petrodollar. Yes, sir. And I've talked a little bit about what's going on in the oil field around here. And well, Chris, I wanted to get your take because you know how the how China is going with the, basically the petro yuan. Um, I'm kind of curious. With this petro rupee thing, I'm I'm wondering why other currencies are going to compete when China has the demand where they could almost kind of replace the petro dollar with the yuan. I'm I'm curious why they're allowing India to compete in their own currency. It's it's very interesting. Um, I didn't know if you had any thoughts about that. Uh, you're gonna have to explain that a little better. Well, you know, just, you know how we, we leveraged the whole thing to basically kind of, we got in bed with Saudi Arabia, offered them a bunch of stuff, and that's how we were able to negotiate the kind of the whole petrodollar thing. And um, you would think between Russia and China and this realignment that there would be, there would be kind of the same thing going on, but it seems like, it really seems like they're just allowing free trade for lack of a better word rather than just coercion and and this plays into my this whole talk of war right um because my thoughts on that if i'm china and russia and i watch uh the mainstream news and even alternative news there's no reason to fight like we're our our entire government is so idiotic we'll, we'll just destroy ourselves why why ra waste the resources you know we have all these transformer issues going on in America with all this trans stuff, you know, and why not? The why transformers. Not? Yeah. <laughs> the Decepticons and all that stuff going on. Why, why, why waste resources when we are self-consuming? You know, our current supposed regime is deconstructing just like you were talking about the oil reserves right hey can you take a second and turn your mic up i thought i was the only one that couldn't hear you turn turn my mic up is that better yeah that's way better oh, okay sorry about that i didn't, yeah, I didn't want to blast anybody out but uh um you know why why waste your resources when we're self-imploding they they strategically sold off our reserves right and then like you said oh we're gonna buy it back when it hits 73 then you depeg from the petro dollar, which immediately uh, crude goes up five dollars a barrel, right? And will never—I mean, it's just going to continue to go up because the demand in the yuan, which is going to be stronger, and now the rupee, which is going to be stronger, is only going to drive our cost per barrel if we're importing. It's only going to drive it up. Which, in reality, what that should do is make as that price goes up, that should make local 
drilling and fracking actually more viable, but they are systematically at the same time closing everything down and forcing us into EV cars and stuff. So it's like, it's, this is like some serious, like 5D chess for lack of a better term. And, and I see no reason for, um, I see no reason for war because we are, we are systematically destroying ourselves. Our current regime is doing that for them. Um, it seems to me that the BRICS nations uh, are, they're coming up with their own currency that's, that's probably not only backed by gold, right. but it's like Mario said earlier um, in a video I'm going to run next week. They could, these countries could back it by uranium, lithium. Uh, they could back it by all kind of commodities, kind of a basket of commodities and a, and a basket of, of different currencies and have their own little, you know, uh, currency that's actually backed by something. Um, but like you said, it's 5D chess. It's, it's hard to, it's, there's so many side currents and things happening. It, it's hard to try to look into the future and see what's going on. Um there's just no telling, you know, I, I don't, I, I can't, I can't figure it. It's one of those things. We're just really going to have to watch it unfold. And I, you know, I think that's part of it um, is they are just putting all the chess pieces in place and then they'll just pick the path of least resistance. So it, it may very well be war, which would be a world war um, or, and I just heard they announced today a $2.6 billion package to the Ukraine more weapons so that's great i mean that's just going to be awesome i mean <laughs> 2.6 billion more for the ukraine 2.6 so. 2. billion more that's unbelievable tuesday yesterday so uh, now so we've got we've got we're stacking rigs we're uh, having trouble with the, the currency, oil could very possibly hit two hundred fifty dollars a barrel in the Thunderdome. Yeah, I mean we're and now I wanted to talk about food a little bit because the price of oil is going to affect the food directly. Yeah, it's going to make everything. I'm talking fertilizer, you name it. it. It would totally devastate, you know, this country. Yeah. And it, it's looking like, you know, I'm sure short term it'll probably pop up a little bit and then something happened and come back down. I don't mm -hmm. think we're there, we're there quite yet, but it looks like it, we're, we're getting really close uh, to some skin because all eyes on oil, man, and really diesel. Yep. Diesel's the actual lifeblood yep. of the economy. Yep. You have, and, the, you know, you have transportation aspect and then you have, you know, all the petro products that's the plastics that are in everything. So it 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 directly impacts everything. So I want to share this with you guys. I was I was actually working on it for tomorrow, but this just came out. Inflation hits the English breakfast hard. Uh, they're talking about <clears throat> most heavily affected is milk, bread, and eggs, with price increases between thirty three percent and forty three percent. On our food prices already we're not even in the thunderdome real good yeah and the average is like 22 percent on food prices you know the the fed wants to come out and say you know inflation six percent or something this is really it is crap i mean it's like uh and for all you guys you've probably already been there anybody in the comments go check out john williams shadow stats just Google shadow stats and, and see how they are manipulating the way they calculate inflation. Uh, it's overwhelming. Uh, you know, it's way closer to 17% probably the CPI, but you know, on those goods right there, eggs and you know, the stuff we actually buy is an average of 22%. <laughs> I mean, I, well, I, when I go to the store, uh, it's 150 bucks and I don't walk away with anything hardly. Yeah. 
you know it's really strange yeah uh, okay what it's like when you have six kids <laughs> oh man i bet six kids <laughs> um That's why we're trying to grow a lot of food <laughs> you need to yeah, hey guys yeah. let me know where you're at in the comments i want to give my my awesome community some shouts it's going to hit $200 a barrel, Giovanni Kurt. Giovanni says food at the grocery store is up 30 to 40%. Wow. That's... What else? What else is going up? So we know the rock is going up. because and, and that's just one of the many things that are hurting this, uh, you know, ga oil and gas prices, or is going to in the future. Yeah. Um, what are what there was something else that uh that was just unbelievable gold, gold just went over 2000 i saw that i think it's like at uh like 2020 or something and silver's up to like 25 right there somewhere okay that's interesting you bring that up stacy was going to do this live stream with me and she's she just can't i mean people are wanting precious metals and she's taking care of them uh but i and and correct me if you think I'm wrong, but gold and silver is just about getting up to that smackdown place. Place, mm -hmm. you know, it gets it gets up, and then they paper over. It. You know, they yeah. do their tricks. Yeah. I'm going to be really curious on what happens this time, because the last two or three times they did that, and I was making videos about it, uh, people were buying more. The you know every time they do that. The, it, the you get a big spike and you know I, i'm curious to see how that works out this time because i can almost promise you premiums are going to go up yeah now hopefully go for people that like to try to buy those dips because i do too when i see it dip i buy a little extra you know i keep a certain percentage and when it takes a dip i buy a little extra um because if it goes down a little bit, I'm hoping the, the premiums will kind of stay put and we'll get to take advantage of that, that first drawdown. But, you know, we might be entering. Um, I've got it wrote down. I was putting my thoughts together uh, yesterday. And we might be entering that spot that we talk about quite often uh, is worth everything goes down. Gold, silver, Bitcoin, you know, everything but the things we actually consume, uh, like food, you know, uh, th that stuff will probably go straight up. But it might go up so much that it puts pressure on gold, silver, and because you can, you know, you right. can live without it as yeah. long as you got food and water. So I, I, we might be starting to get there. Did you see? So there was this article that just came out today. Mm -hmm. After being criminally charged for rigging precious metals, J.P. Morgan Chase controls 53% of all precious metal contracts held by banks. Wow. What a crook. Yeah. What a, what a manipulating... How does he sleep at night? It's the same. It's the same. It's the same usual suspect, you know, and this J.P. Morgan Chase was just the ones that were implicated in the Silicon Valley Bank for creating the flight to, you know, we're too big to fail. So send so put all your deposits here. Simultaneously manipulating the gold and silver prices. It's like it's, you know, and, and they just pay a fine and the beat goes on. Yeah, the left hand slaps the right hand, mm -hmm. and we move forward, yeah. and we do it again. But that stuff doesn't last, you know. That that uh, the cream will rise to the top, you know. Uh, Deuteronomy, uh, you know, your sins will find you out. Yeah, that's right. You reap what you sow, <laughs> and right. it's gonna come out. And we don't know when, uh, but you know, just the time to get ready is now you know that's with food and anything and even precious metals because by the time you need it it's going to be really hard to come by i've never seen anything about i'm watching my wife daily work from daylight till well not daylight eight o'clock but she works till 11 at night 11 30 at night wow. 
it is wild, man. The people that are, that are moving, you know, and, and I was just talking to a, a, a miner, a resource. Uh, I can't think of the name of the company. now. I think in a minute, I always want to say it wrong. Galantis, Galantis gold. And, uh, I was telling him that and he was like, man, it's really happening. I was like, yeah, it's like, we're watching history. And I'm not saying we're not gonna have ups and downs, but you know, kind of on the front lines of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And as, as difficult and as challenging, as challenging as things are, there's still lots of opportunity. And for those that have been preparing, like my personal scenario right now is we have, um, cash savings and we're waiting dips are coming there's going to be a real estate dip um there's going to be um probably if things get bad there'll be a substantial dip in like hard asset types of equipment stuff and we're waiting to take advantage of those type of opportunities and if you've prepared a little bit like maybe a backyard flock or something like that um, you know you're taking advantage of um you know the resources that you have been currently developing and there's still you know there's still a lot of opportunity to put the wheel in motion and you know just doing what you can do to become more self-reliant develop community and local community and network together you know to to put yourself and your uh, parallel community in a better position to serve one another you know provide resources for one another um, and that's why we really like putting this kind of information out there. Cause it's like, Hey, we've been talking about this stuff for eight years now and it's happening now. And this is why we've been doing all this other stuff in the interim, you know, to get ready for this, um, freight train that we've seen coming for a very long time. It's just that the power brokers and the, uh, you know, the financial witchcraft folk that's been doing their, um, fiscal alchemy all this time you know like eventually that stuff like you were saying eventually the chickens come home to roost you know and that that's that's kind of where we're at yeah and it's a 40 pound chicken <laughs> yeah <laughs> hey uh turn your mic up a little more if you can a little more okay there you go i better? just saw a good question hey guys we're sitting here talking about prepping and i often wonder uh do you guys consider yourself preppers? Do you consider yourself uh, put hashtag prepper if you've got months of food? If you if you're actually because there's some people that are watching right now that are probably think we're ten full hatters, <laughs> you know? They probably think put hashtag prepper in the comments and I'll kind of put the name with the hashtag, and uh, it's always fun to interact with you guys. And I just saw a good question. It was about. Uh, when is the best time to, when will used prices go down? Best time to buy used S beach. You want to, you want to take that one? I believe, you know, I believe when this, when real estate drops, um, that has a heavy impact, um, kind of on everything. And so, once the foreclosure processes go, so like for buying used, as soon as that real estate really takes a hard hit, I believe that hard assets will follow. And I believe that that's going to kind of be, but you know, you're going to watch it be, because see the, the, what's kind of floating everything right now is all this crazy quantitative easing and they keep pushing that thing. Eventually something's going to break somewhere and then things are going to become out of balance because they've already completely destroyed the fundamentals so when 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 whatever and, and it's going to be it's difficult because they're attacking everything simultaneously it'll probably be some weird bizarre thing that you know is the straw that breaks the camel's back i don't know if um they're saying my sound is really low it's like it's like screaming in my head i don't know if they can Hey, Can Manuel, hang on one second. Manuel Barrera, he says not. You know, there's hashtag preppers rolling in. And uh, thanks, guys, for, for doing that for me. Uh, but, Manuel, that's cool if you're not prepping, but could you give me some reasons why? Because I mean, you, we could reverse out of this thing on 
you know, we could reverse engineer prepping. Uh, that, that's kind of how I like to think through problems because I've never really considered myself a prepper, believe it or not. Uh, and uh, I mean, I, now uh, bring, being prepared and prudent just seems like it's the right thing to do. You know, it seems like it's the logical uh, thing to do. And I'm not getting on you if, if you're if you don't think we should prep and everything's hunky dory and, you know, it's all uh, rainbows and uh, unicorns and nothing's bad and everything's OK. Just because it has been for the last 60 years and everybody experienced prosperity, uh, perpetual prosperity for the last the, 60 the, years. The contrarian view is everybody's going to come and steal all your stuff, Chris. So why take the time and the effort, which, you know, people that live in cities and in very tight neighborhoods, I can absolutely see why you would think that. Um, but I mean, we live out in the country like way out in the country and um it's gonna take him a while to get here <laughs> manuel said he grew up on a ranch was born prepping oh okay. yeah that's cool so you are pre you're you're yeah you're prepper okay well because I, I, I often wonder if that happens a lot you know people watch us like oh these guys are just doom or doom dares they're you know that's so frustrating that, you know, people say when you put information out there, I mean, the the mainstream media is just ignoring and burying the stuff. So we bring it to the surface and we do it and we kind of joke about it and we're lighthearted about it because, hey, man, this kind of stuff has been going on forever, you know, and there is an enormous amount of bread and circuses in America. And we can watch these repetitive actions of these um cycles of countries and you can see the bread and circuses in america and rome is burning for lack of a better analogy and you know we're watching it happen and it it goes to it speaks to the what i was saying about why china and russia wouldn't need to attack you know like hey we'll just let them self-implode they're doing their qe they know that they know financially we're going to implode it's an impossible it's 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 only a matter of time. So if we're going to implode financially, we have this whole transformer thing where all of a sudden somehow like 90% of everybody that lives in America is completely confused about their genetic makeup. And so it's, you know, so they're weaponizing the, the triangle brigade. And you're, I mean, we're watching it happen. I, I just saw some footage from Canada and what happened with their, going on up there and what the police didn't do and uh you know you're watching kind of the setup and if if i'm the guy making decisions i'll be like hey let's just pop popcorn and we'll sit back and watch them you know implode on themselves thanks charger mopar check out chris's welding channel i do have a welding channel uh i love you know. the welding channel oh thanks dude it's uh it's fixing to get a little more active but uh there's never a good time to stop and, and get out the camera and try to it's it, you know when you're actually working and not doing like a setup thing so i've got to i've got to work on that i'd like to go back to the uh, car when is the best time uh, when you know is it time to buy a car yet is it coming when will that be that to me hinges on unemployment uh the whole housing market, yeah. the, the, uh, everything hinges on unemployment. You can measure an economy by GDP, but just look at the unemployment. You know, that's the, uh, that is the, the big one. When it gets a little worse and, and when people like the ones, the people that are working at Walmart or, or maybe McDonald's, uh, when they, when it's no longer, worth going to work because oil prices are you know your fuel prices are so high and the food you know you eat there whatever's really high because it's so expensive um people are just not gonna go they're gonna say i'm not yeah. gonna trade my time you know your time is your life and your life your time is, is your greatest asset so why would you trade that for just a a, a minuscule way to maybe scratch out a life you know, it's just, uh, I don't know. Uh, that, that to me is when car prices get really cheap is when people can't afford them Yeah, because they're going to choose to eat. 
Yeah. They're going to choose to feed their kids. That's why I got out of the rental properties. That's why, uh, you know, that that's when car prices get cheap, I think. But in the short term, it could just be, you know, just a small dip in the economy and there'll be. Yeah. And on that cost. note, stop eating out. Like I was a financial planner for 11 years and one of the death knell to from all the different, you know, analyses I've done for clients and we had 55 million under management. And one of the massive major expenses was eating out and people, you know, and, and I, I still work a day job and all that stuff. And I watch all my, um, all the guys that I work with and they all go to lunch and they're dropping 20 bucks a day for lunch, you know, and it used to be 10. I was doing it easy. <laughs> I was doing that. It was 40 bucks for me. Yeah. And that's crazy, man. I've, I've always been too big of a cheapskate and, you know, worrying about your health and wanting to eat right, you know, it's very difficult to eat right out. You don't really know that what you're actually getting anyway and save the money and do something for your future. You know what I mean? It, it is so easy to cook. Yeah. I cook all the time. We cook our food. We eat actual food. We're prepping, prepping real food. <laughs> you know, I got up and had pancakes. I, did, I had 100 grams of oatmeal. I had uh, egg whites, a little yeah. bit of pumpkin. I blended it up in the blender and made awesome pancakes full of protein. And I felt good till lunchtime. You know, it wasn't hard. No. Was it pulling up to the window at make me sick? No. To buy some food... That's going to make you feel bad and give you all kind of medical issues later. Yeah. So what you should, I mean, I would really like to encourage people to, to start eating at home, start learning how to cook. Anybody can cook unhealthy. Anybody can throw a bunch of butter yeah. on something and make it bad, but you can, you can take little steps and, uh, man, your, your quality of life improves so much by doing that. And you'll save a fortune. You'll yeah. Save and you'll a save fortune. a bunch, ton yeah. of money. Yeah. I, uh, I was going through 20 bucks easy at lunchtime. I'd go out to eat with the consultants and, you know, it was an easy $20 a day. And then you got break time and I was grabbing a couple of McMake Me Six on the way home, on the way to work and a coffee with three creams. I was getting out of shape, man. I was spilling over my pants and uh, I had to turn it all around. I just had to make up my mind, you know. Yeah. I was thinking, why am I doing this? Why am I? why am I making myself sick? And I don't like the way I look, you know, and I just turned it around. I just figured it out. Yeah. I, I'm going to make some more cooking videos, guys. If you like the cooking videos, uh, the protein pot pie, we still eat that all the time. Uh, I've been doing, uh, lately it's been the protein pancakes because the number, I always talk about protein because the number one nutrient that people lack is protein. Yeah. They're eating yeah. fat and carbs. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> So anyway, I'll get off the food thing, but that's a that's a big one for me. I really like to eat, and uh, I really like to eat good food. All right, guys, let's see. Eating out once a week. That's not bad. Hey, Pete, do you have anything you guys want us to cover? Because we've got more. Squatchy. I saw Carlos on here, too. Got some of my subs have... Uh... Come come over to join the financial prepper. I love it, guys. Yeah. Come join the community of like-minded people. Get the good info. I'm sorry, but butter is not bad for you. Fat is good for you. When it comes from an animal feed rated right. I agree. I ate a ton of butter. I love butter. Sometimes I eat it like a Snickers bar. Yeah. When I'm doing the keto diet, I'll salt a big chunk of butter and I'll just eat it. Uh, the problem with fat, J-Bar, is uh, there's nine calories per gram. So it's it, 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 to put that in perspective, there's four calories in a carbohydrate, one gram of carbohydrate. There's four calories in a protein of carbohydrate. And there's nine grams, nine calories in one gram of fat. So it's really easy to overeat 
you know, it's, it's, it's so easy to on fat because your body loves it. Your body wants to eat a bunch of it, but just think of like a tablespoon of peanut butter. It was like 200 calories or something crazy. And, you know, uh, a pile of vegetables or, or, you know, carbohydrates, uh, popcorn makes a big hole, you know, makes a big bunch of it. You get to eat a bunch of it. Fat's easy to, to overeat on this one. Uh, try to stay away from it. Unless I'm doing the keto thing. If I'm doing the keto thing, then you, you know, fat's definitely yeah, on me. Yeah, fat don't matter on keto. But I agree. I love butter. Wish I had some right now. Hey, I had, hey, MNJ. I admit I have some fast food sometimes. Yeah, I just quit that. I quit that and uh, Cokes. They make me sick. Oh, After yeah. After you get off of them for a while. Can't eat soda. Yeah, can't drink sodas. Yeah, they'll, uh, I mean, if you want to be fat and sick, you could do that. Yeah. But, you know, that's just the way it is. It's got Maybe that high fructose like corn syrup. 20 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Long time. I only like Long Coke time. with if it's got a little whiskey in it. I like the way it tastes. <laughs> but I don't do that anymore either. But I do like the way it tastes. Bacon grease. I agree. Well, guys, do you have any questions for TD? Check out his channel, uh, The Texas Boys. Um, have y'all done someone a video just, uh Someone was just asking about an update on the Amish farmer, and I'm going to be uh, looking into that. You know, the last time um, Robert Barnes had pretty much negotiated where he just had to pay a very small penalty, and they were in the process of basically ironing that all out. But uh, I will, I am going to check into that. But it looks like Amos Miller stuff is being resolved. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. I mean, well, actually, I, I know about it, but I don't know anything uh, breaking. Okay. What are your thoughts on Kenyan president speech about dropping dollars? That was from... Gen Francisco. Gen, Gen Francisco. Gen Francisco. What, oh, what are your thoughts me? on that? Do you, well, I was going to ask you first. I can get into it if you want. But the Kenyan yeah. president, do you know about what he's yeah. talking about? And so, you know, so it's, it's just everybody's aligning to get the biggest bang for their buck. I mean, so if, if you don't have these um, military, if you don't have these... Uh, either any type of deep state tie or if you're not like heavily financed by the military industrial complex and you're not on a bunch of like U.S. welfare, you're like, well, if I go, if I de-dollar, I have more buying power. Why, why wouldn't you, you know? So, I mean, that's, that's my opinion on why he's doing it because th he wants to get, I mean, in a very real way, once we be once we're not the biggest dog on the porch, I mean, it makes sense to not use the dollar. I agree. I'm going to roll that clip right now. I want to take you guys. This is this is worth watching. I know everybody on here, half of you probably might have seen it, but uh, this is really interesting. I mean, it's amazing. We're just watching. Like, I mean, this is this is big deal stuff, and you know, and we're. I'm not some like brainiac or, and I don't spend all my time just reading and thinking about this stuff. But I mean, this is like massively how dominant the dollar has been for forever. Uh, not, and not to, like it should be. And I don't want you guys to, you know, to let it slip. Can't hear it. De-dollarization of the international economy. Yeah, I hear it. I can hear it on my end. Economy okay. is gaining momentum. This is spearheaded by powerful countries like China and Russia. At the recent state visit by Chinese President Xi Jinping in Russia, President Vladimir Putin indicated that they are in favor of using Chinese currency for trade in other parts of the world like Africa, Asia and Latin America. The Kremlin has been slapped with a raft of sanctions by the Western world for invading Ukraine. A serious incentive for the development of trade and investment cooperation is the expansion of the practice of settlements between our countries in national currency. 
the audio just dropped out. Can you hear me, Chris? The audio and the video just dropped out. Maybe when you muted your mic, Chris. You're muted right now. You're still muted. It's still, it's still, you're still muted. Okay. So I, unplugged my mic. I had to unplug my mic because I couldn't hear the clip. But anyway, uh, did y'all want to finish watching that or did you, have y'all seen that? Yeah. It's, it's just, it's a kind of incredible. And you know, it's really incredible is we're letting it happen like we want it to the u.s as a well the u.s i mean all of the nations are working together behind the scenes you know the whole pandemic thing they all work together if you look at these different projects like the neom project in saudi arabia where every country every first and second world country is pumping millions and billions and trillions of dollars into this thing um but the davos crowd the bilderberg crowd the wef crowd is we're all being kind of complicit in this shift and um it was carol quigley wrote a book um tragedy and hope and carol quigley he's a Rhodes scholar he was bill clinton's mentor and he talks about how bazinia brzezinski and heinz kissinger hand selected china right in the 50s or 60s in the 60s right and hey we're going to do this with china we're going to build them up and this is how we're going to do it and now this is that end game of tragedy and hope that we're watching and um because we could have easily repositioned and renegotiated and threatened and done different things so that this didn't happen but we're not doing that and it's and it's real easy when you have this uh, senile puppet as a figurehead to and then you, so you can kind of like blame it on him, I guess you know what I mean. But which is silly. I mean, he doesn't do anything. But um, <laughs> touch the hair on my legs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we we could have easily like continued to um, position and negotiate around this, and we're allowing it to happen as a as a nation with our fiscal policy and to continue to QE, to continue to deconstruct our financial, uh, the petrodollar, we've just, we're just kind of letting it all happen. To allow yeah. for this realignment. Yeah. The resets in the mail. Yeah. The resets coming. Uh, I would encourage anybody to go to the WF website and just check it out get lost in there. And it's, it's all there. Yeah. You know, it just, see what they have on their mind no governments and the people in the governments have been groomed by these monsters yeah and uh they're just uh they're they're taking over and B biden doesn't know whether he's washing drying or hanging out mm -hmm. i mean he <laughs> it is so obvious to me that that guy doesn't uh, he doesn't even know i mean when's ice cream time is all yeah, exactly about. It's it's a it's incredible. It is so incredible that I mean the people have to feel uh, not you know I'm not gonna say not very smart, but they got to feel like they were misled when voting for him. You know, yeah. It's got it's got to be. I, I just can't imagine anybody not being able to see through that. But some people wake up slower, you know. And some people just drank the Kool-Aid and fell off the wagon. You know, they got too open-minded and the brains fell out. That's usually what I run into when I start talking to somebody like that. You know, that's that's a pro-Biden. And yeah. I run into a lot of them in these ventures going to Miami and yeah, you do. California yeah. and all over the place. And usually in the airport, I'll I'll make conversation and man, you can tell they are they are switched mm -hmm. off, Instant. not hearing it. Yeah, it is. Uh, not even worth discussing. That's the problem is they can't agree to disagree and try to work through it. It's like, no, nope, you're wrong. I'm right. That's the end of it without any explanation. Yeah. 
Okay. Pete says better wake up slow than not at all. Yeah, I agree. And sometimes, hey, sometimes I get people in the comments that, uh, you know, gold's never going over 2000 or whatever. I get some really dumb comments. But, uh, and then people, you know, and they're being a little bit ugly, but sometimes people really jump on like, you know, you're stupid, go back to sleep, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, that's really not the best way to wake up. That's like waking somebody up with a bucket of ice water. Right. You know, insulting them, you know, right. you're right, I'm wrong type of attitude. Just try to get them to, just like I did uh, the commenter a while ago. Now, can you please can you please explain why? Right, that's exactly you, that's exactly you, what I do. Like hey, that? could you could you rephrase that? Because I didn't understand what you were saying. Yeah, yeah and we'll work through it together, and then we'll yeah. kind of take some pieces out that I don't understand or you don't understand, and we'll we'll talk about those a little bit. Because that's you know, it's, that's it's how they chopped us up as society. You know, you create this like it's like outrage, like it's you're outraged over here and you're outraged over here. So if you say the just one word off or mispronounce something, it's like, ah, you know, it's like attack <laughs> instead of like, hey, let's just I want to try to understand what you're saying. And then I want to hopefully you'll give me the opportunity to explain what I'm what I'm trying to say. It's the it's the good team versus the bad team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And both sides think they're the good team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, people don't know how to debate or discuss jumping into insults. That is so true, man. Yeah. That is uh, so true. I think one of the main reasons for that, too, is a lot of people are so busy that they don't even really honestly think about a lot of these things. So they, they hear talking points, and they're like, okay, so if somebody brings this up, this is my partisan talking point and they never really stop to actually think about the issue and how it's directly affecting them their family and everybody they love and care about mnj's got a good point schools are indoctrination camps with gender dysmorphia at the center yeah. okay something about schools uh, actually the ninja brought it up in his live stream the other day um so private schools uh, they're about to be on the cut list. Yeah. They're about to see very low enrollments. Uh, I thought that was, you know, uh, and that's really going to hurt your Christian schools that aren't, that aren't funded, you know, yeah. uh, by the public. So just, that was just a quick thing. I thought, man, he's right. That, that was a, uh, so the solution is in that industry. Watch out. Do what? Yeah. I said, the solution is homeschool. Yeah, right. Sure. Yeah. Uh, that yeah, probably, that, I don't know if that's an option for everybody. Sure. Yeah. But uh, if you have that available, I don't see why not. I was fortunate enough. My parents sent me to a Christian school. It's about a mile from my house. Wow. That's cool. And we got to learn about, uh, you know, Disney and what they're up to. Yeah. You know, yeah. the Bible teacher taught us about that. We got to learn about how the earth was created, you know, uh, real, real history. You know, what yeah, actually right. happened when the Mayflower came over? Yes. Yeah, stuff yeah. like that, you know. And it, it was, uh, I didn't know how fortunate I was, you know. Yeah, amen. But, uh, you know, looking back, that was awesome. So, guys, we've been on here for 53 minutes. And I know TD's got things to do. You guys got things to do. Uh, one more question. 25 to 40 percent of our military age young people are not fit for combat. Wow. Wow. That's, that's crazy. Hey, man, that's incredible. The, in closing, man, when we went to Jamaica, there's no shame. None no. whatsoever. There's none left. We got hung up at in Jamaica for one night, uh, and I had to find an all-inclusive place because I didn't want to just go to Motel 8 or something. So we went about five minutes to an all-inclusive adult place. And I was like, that'd be all right. It was pretty nice. Man, it was. There wasn't an adult there. <laughs> <laughs> 
it was wild screaming and hollering all night it was like trying to sleep in a nightclub wow it was nutty dude and they didn't have uh when i was standing in line to get in the mo the the place the i guess you'd call it a hotel uh there was a lady in her underwear her bra and panties standing in line to check in mm. it's like wow well, well, this Crazy is really town. strange yeah but yeah there's a lot of uh younger people that uh are bad they're actually addicted to the food because it's so addictive the food is yeah. so addictive by design it is like it, it hits every thing your body wants they've engineered yeah. it so you come mm -hmm. back that's, that's right. just like a drug yeah, yeah. so anyway td you have anything you want to add before we let everybody go no man i appreciate you having me on I'm glad we were able to work through the technical bugs we'll eventually get one of these dry runs off without any hitches <laughs> yeah that'll be all right thanks guys for being here have an awesome awesome day i'll see you tomorrow later see y'all thanks <laughs>